Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. A new week is upon us. That means a new outdoor adventure we shall take. Gary, what are we going to be talking about today and throughout the week? Well, Simon, we're going to talk about sight fishing. Seeing the fish before they see you, basically. And people might think the only time fish are shallow is in the spring when they spawn, but that's not true because they do that, but they also move in there to feed because that's usually where the vegetation, better oxygen is and everything. So spawning is a good time, you know, to to fish shallow, sight fish, but it can be done throughout the year. When they spawn, females always seem to come in after the male because with bass, they have to build a nest to try and attract that female. But, you know, the big thing is, is if you can't see them, you don't know they're there. Right. You can, you're just wishing and hoping and throwing a, throwing a jig. That's all there is to it. Sight fishing is, is important, and it's also one of these stealth presentations. You, you don't want to come into the shallow water. You don't want your bait to slam down like a rock. You want it to go in gently. Or you see the fish on one side, left or right, you can cast to the left or right, but try and do it gently because you don't want that bait coming down hard. You don't want to spook them out of there before you get a chance to catch them. But, you know, it's uh, shallows. That's where, where most of the fish are. They may not be all there during the spawn, but the thing is, as the season goes on, the sun gets warmer, you know, they're going to move down to deeper water. After the spawn, they're going to move down to deeper water. But the thing is, they're going to have to move shallow sometime because that's what they feed on where it's going to be in the vegetation and so forth. Fishing from shore, where it all starts for most anglers. And we'll discuss how to do that more effectively as the week rolls on. Thank you, Gary, for the information. Thank you for joining us today. And thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, fishing from shore where it all begins for most anglers. And Gary, there are some tips and tactics to help you be more successful. If you learn these presentations, you've got a pretty good chance of catching fish. But the big thing as far as I'm concerned, Simon, is that you have to see them before you can catch them. And that's where polarized sunglasses come in. Absolutely. They've made some incredible advancements. And those outdoors glass, I mean, it's not just... Polarized doesn't just come in the camo styles, although you will see a lot of outdoor glasses. That polarization really gives you an advantage to see through, cut through the glisten and the top uh, of that water. The ripples and so forth. Right. Yeah, you bet it does. It makes a big difference, you know. And I have several pair of uh, glasses, you know, and I have different colors too because mm-hmm. different times of the year, a different color will work better, better than the other, but they're all polarized. And I've got the frames that go all the way back with the glass in and and those are polarized too, so my peripheral vision is I can see quite well. But shallow water is probably one of the easiest places to fish, especially if you see the fish because you can watch the reaction. If he just kind of ignores it, you might have to get a little closer to him. You might have to bounce it off his nose one or two times uh, or just slow it down or speed it up. So, But the whole thing is uh, it's also good when you land fish because the guy in the net, if he doesn't have good polarized glasses he's gonna have a heck of a time because he can't see it uh you know maybe your bottom bouncer's is coming up and he knows it's coming but if you're fishing with a jig if he's got polarized glasses he can see that fish down below the surface makes the not only the fishing but the landing easier also polarized sunglasses you can get them in all shapes and sizes all price ranges but certainly worth the investment Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you as well for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about fishing from shore and things you can do to be more successful. We'll pick up where we left off yesterday talking about polarized sunglasses a great investment a company you've really enjoyed and done well with is the fly fisherman sunglasses flyfisherman.com but again check that out it's a it's a great site some good stuff there but bottom line is just get a pair of polarized sun, of sunglasses if you're going to yeah. be out in the outdoors fishing and they aren't that expensive no you can get them in you know you can get really inexpensive ones or you can get really high price ones but uh for what they'll do with, with to improve it. your fishing it's going to be well worth it yeah when i first started i didn't have them and guys were saying well there's a fish and i'm going okay where you know right then, you know, once I got polarized glass, it made a big difference. It's an easy method of fishing. It gives you a little bit of advantage, 
hopefully you see the fish before they see you. It doesn't have to be during the spawn, you know, because once the spawn's over, the fish are going to be up in the grass moving around looking for something to eat because the bait fish are there. And uh, makes for one much better fishing trip, I guess you'd say, if you can see something going on. But, you know, once you see the fish there, you get kind of an idea of how they're reacting, you know. They're completely ignoring you, you might have to change something. Maybe the, the method you're fishing, maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit slower. But uh, it's hard for a fish to to ignore a small, small jig, a small bait, because uh, they're in there to feed, and why not feed on this, which we hope they do. Anything you can do to stack the odds in your favor and make your outdoor adventure a little more enjoyable. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you for joining us. And to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your outdoor adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, fishing from shore. Gary, some little things that you can do to stack the odds in your favor and hopefully have more success, presentation being one of them. I've used jigs, I've used small buzz baits, beetle spins, that kind of stuff. You can uh, use a trailer behind it. Of course, if you're after bluegills, you're going to downsize your bait. If they're, you're after largemouth bass, you're going to go with bigger bait. And, you know, if it's a real weedy area, you might have to go with the jig and pig combination. Now, uh, the pig isn't so much anymore. Uh, it's more of the plastics. You know, you've got the different scented baits and so forth that they use. But, you know, you just want to basically pitch the bait softly into that area and just gently basically hop it back. Bring the rod up, let the bait fall, bring the rod up, let the bait fall. And uh, you can see the fish move in, and once he flares his gills, hopefully uh, set the hook on him. But I tell you, it's just uh, it's a lot of fun. But a lot of people come in there, they run down to the bank, or they move their boat right up into the into the junk, and trolling motors running, and electronics, and talk about letting the fish know ahead of time that somebody's there, you know, because all that stuff does make a difference. I mean, think of it like in pheasant hunting, when we talk about when you pull in, you don't jump out of the vehicle, slam the doors, start talking loudly. It's alerting the the birds, and the same is true with in the fishing world, that just because they're underwater and you don't maybe see them right away doesn't mean they're not feeling that vibration and or even having some visual above the water of you, and and you're just trying to stack the odds in your favor to sneak in there, throw something in front of them. Like you mentioned, chances are if they're in the shallows, that means they're hungry. You've got a great chance to, to get in front of a hungry fish, and that's the hopeful end result. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, fishing from shore. Gary, some little things that you can do to stack the odds in your favor and hopefully have more success, presentation being one of them. I use a lot of Northland tackle, a Northland fireball. It's a short shanked lure that you can hook a, a teaser hook or a treble hook behind it just, just in case you're getting short strike. Or you can use a, a small spinner bait. And with the spinner baits, you can run them on top of the water if you speed them up, or you can use them like a helicopter. Bring them up a little bit, let's rod down, let mm-hmm. them spin down. You can make them act differently by uh, using your rod and, and your and your real different uh, setup. So, But the thing is, uh, once a you hook a fish because of the weeds that are there in the shallow you better set the hook hard and and try and get them out into open water but you know it's one of those deals not to mention gary it's kind of a given but i'll say it anyway you know a few weeks ago or a couple weeks ago whatever it was we were talking about a first aid show and sunscreen and different things you can do to protect yourself not only is that going to give you an edge having a pair of polarized sunglasses in t- terms of visibility, it's also going to protect your eyes, and that's pretty important that's right. when in the sun. That is. You know, you're, you can burn your eyes. You can hurt, uh, impact your vision, uh, especially with that glare off the water if you're not protecting them. So two birds, one stone with a good pair of polarized sunglasses. And which that can, glare off the water is going right. to a good opportunity to burn you, too. So, right. Yeah. Or polarized glasses, cover up, and use sunscreen. It's just kind of common sense. Tips to hopefully help you be more successful when fishing from the shore, and also some tips to make sure you don't regret later with a sunburn. Gary, great information. We appreciate the time you've taken today. Thank you for joining us today and throughout the week. And a big thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. 
Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week our focus has been fishing from shore. Gary, it's where most anglers get their start. Some great tips and tactics to help you be more successful when fishing from shore. Let's recap this week's adventure. Fish are shallow not only just in the spring but also throughout the year when they feed. You know, in the heat of the summer they're going to be there early morning before the sun power gets real great or late in the evening to feed. But polarized glasses just let you cut the ripple, cut the glare, and that, that, that's a big, a big deal. And when sight fishing, you want to use a lure that's associated with the fish you're fishing for, bass, bluegill, whatever. And you, know, you can use small spinnerbaits, beetle spins. You can use tiny jigs for bluegills or crappies, just depending on what you're fishing for. But if you see them, you're a before they see you you're way ahead of the game absolutely gary another fantastic outdoor adventure so many more just like this one on the radio program can be found 24 7 online and on tv yeah the show tv show runs in eight states and 1.6 million households throughout the upper midwest in south dakota north dakota minnesota we're on midco sports network nebraska news channel nebraska and we have our facebook pages you know both uh outdoorsman adventure outdoorsman productions Outdoor Adventure Radio and so on and so forth. And you can also watch us on YouTube or on the Outdoor Channel, My Outdoor TV. And my columns are on all of our web pages as well as Facebook pages, uh, Gary Howes Outdoors. You've got recipes, columns, information, and so forth. Tons of good stuff. Check it out. Gary, thank you for taking this outdoor adventure with us on the radio this week, and we look forward to doing so again next week. Always my pleasure, Simon. Thanks again, Gary. Thank you for joining us today and throughout the week and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great.